Hey, this is your host, Rick Houston. I recently found a box filled with the mini cassettes that I used to record interviews in the late 1990s to early 2000s. I thought they were long lost, but there they were. I would never have believed it to be possible, but we're now going to be able to bring you interviews with racers who've long since left us. We're going to start with Ron Bouchard, who very sadly died on December 10th, 2015. Ron, this one's for you, my friend. We went to Talladega. I always like to go fast. You know, that never bothered me. And, uh, you know, got there, and I could tell I had a fast race car. Because their cars used to always run good on the speedways. Bob Johnson always had good power. Uh, the thing drove good. And we got there, and we practiced a little bit. And uh, I was sitting there, and at that point, couldn't figure out the draft. You know, I had a hard time to pass cars, and I couldn't figure out exactly what or how or what was the problem. And uh, Buddy Baker was parked right aside of us, driving for the Woods Brothers. So I went over and talked to him, and he kind of took a liking to me. He started helping me, and he says, well, jump in that thing. He says, we'll go out and practice. You know, old Baker, he just loved to go out and run Talladega as long as they'd leave him out there. So he took me out there, and he showed me a lot of things about drafting and uh, where to run and how to pass and what I was doing wrong, and uh, we, uh, you know, in that race, we qualified 13th, so, you know, like I said, I knew I had a pretty good car, and, uh, you know, we sat probably for two hours after we practiced, and, and he just gave me a lot of scenarios, you know, he says, hey, if at the end of the race, he says, your car is as strong as mine, if not better, and, you know, he discussed where you wanted to be on the last lap, and, you know, how it was different than Daytona. Uh, where you wanted to pass and how you wanted to pass and things you wanted to do. And I'll tell you, if it wasn't for that, I never could have won that race. But when it come down to the last lap, it wasn't like I didn't know what I was going to do. I knew exactly where and what if everything unfolded the right way. And that was thanks to Buddy. Well, tell me about that last lap. I know that Daryl and, and Kerry were, were battling pretty hard for the win. And, and you kind of, from, from the way that I read it, uh, you kind of snuck up on them. Well, you know, I, I ran there all day. I ran up front. I don't. I didn't lead the race. Yeah, maybe once or twice a little. But you know, I had a strong enough car to get up there. But at that point, here's some guy from New England who you know won a lot of modified races. You know, I won probably 400 races when I raced around here, yeah. and nobody knew me from a hole in the wall. And you know, all day long, I ran in the first five, six, eight, ten. All day, I was able to stay up there. We had good pit stops, and. Uh, and we were nearing the end of the race, and, and uh, I was just sitting there riding with Terry and, and Daryl, and uh, Daryl tells a story every time I see him. He says he looks up in the mirror, and he, he sees a car behind Labonte, and he, he calls Junior on the radio. He says, Junior, who's that yellow car back there? He says, that's that damn Bouchard. He's been there all day, you damn fool. <laughs> so he stops paying attention, and, and uh, we run, and we get the white flag, and at that point, I remember Baker telling me, you know, at Talladega, where you want to pass, and if two get side by side, where you want to go, and where you should make that move, and uh, we come down into three, and it was Daryl, Terry, Ricky Rudd was up on my bumper, but he was a lap car, and uh, I had tried to make a little pass earlier, and got out of line, and fell backwards a little bit, and Ricky got right up on my bumper, and pushed me right back up to him, and then he backed off the last lap, and uh, we went down in the three, and I didn't move, just hung right on their bumper, and uh, we come to the tri-oval, and Terry jumped to the outside of Daryl. So right away, as soon as Daryl seen him up on the outside, Daryl tried to run him up the racetrack, of course, to get rid of him. And when them two got side by side, I mean, it just stopped their cars. I got a draft in between the two of them, and I just come right up on them, and it seemed like I was going 30 mile an hour faster than they were. <laughs> And I just, as soon as I got to Daryl, I cranked that baby left and beat him by a half a fender at the start finish line. You know, and like I say, if it wasn't for Baker, I'd have stumbled for a minute there, and all it takes is a split second. If you make the wrong move or you go the wrong way in the draft, you back up. And what he told me, if there was a one, one car you were trying to beat, if there was two cars you were trying to beat, or if there was three cars. But at Talladega, he says you can be as far back as fourth and still win this race but this is where you need to pass, and this is where you need to do it. And we all know there was probably nobody any better in the draft than Baker at the big race tracks, you know? Uh, he had his father's experience, and he was always good on the big race tracks. He liked them. He enjoyed racing.
to them, and, and uh, he used to work real hard on them racetracks. What did it mean to you to win that race? Well, it was, you know, it was just incredible. Um, you know, at, at that point, because of where the start-finish line is, I wasn't sure if I beat him, and my radio didn't work. You know, we were kind of a low-budget operation compared to a lot of them guys. Yeah. You know, Jack had X amount of dollars. He, Jack had a lot of money, but he was only going to spend so much in them race cars. Yeah. And uh, he did a good job with what he had. We used to work out of Connecticut. We'd drive to every one of them races. You know, it was it was a little different for us. And, uh, you know, when we come across the start-finish line, I, I couldn't hear my guys on the radio, and I, I sat down in that seat took a deep breath and I looked up and that scoreboard said 47, 11, and 44. I said, be a son of a bitch, we won this race. <laughs> exactly like that. <laughs> so I come down from the road and when I pulled on pit road, I see all my guys running out and they were jumping up and down and, and um, you know, a lot of them guys come over the wall and they congratulated me. People that, you know, at that point only knew of to go into Daytona and watch them race. And, uh, I mean, it was just a, an exciting thing. We were there for the teardown. It took a long time. For a while, they thought the motor was two cubic inches too big when they checked it. And uh, I don't know if you remember Bob Johnson. Yeah. Yeah. He's still on it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I yeah. talked to him last week at Loudner, two weeks ago. <laughs> the official said, Bob, this thing, uh, the stroke is a little too long in this motor. Bob says, just exactly the bullshit. He said, I'll rip that crankshaft out with my bare hands. <laughs> So they punched around and measured it, measured it. It was it was right on the money. It was three fifty seven or something. Three fifty three fifty seven point eight. So we got through that and we got home and you know, there was a lot of excitement that next week, uh, when we finally made it back home, you know, Connecticut people had parties in Fitchburg, they had the place all decorated and congratulating me and my house all decorated. So it was an exciting thing, you know, something that never happened to me in my whole racing career.